Um, I'm Michael Cheverini. Um, I'm 64 years old, so I'm pretty much consider myself almost retired. Um, I've uh, been working for Guaranteed Rate since 2009. Okay, uh, good solid company. Uh, they give me a team. So I mean, I've got uh, a bunch of loans. Let's see, what do we got? We got 15 loans in the pipeline right now. Uh, if I total that up. Um, so that is right now I'm running uh, $5,705 and I closed another $2 million on the boards for the month already. So that's $7 million, $7 million in the pipeline. And my day was pretty much got up, made breakfast, had my pipeline meeting at 10 and I went to the gym. That was my day. Okay. So uh, I got a new loan to work on and that's about it. And you say, how in the world can you close to at 5.7 million going and not really sit here all day long? Because I have a team of people that my company gives me and their job is to close the loans. So that's their process. So essentially you need to learn two things in this business. That's all it is. Number one is how to generate business. And number two is how to close loans on time. If, if you can do those, master those two things, then this, then the mortgage business is gonna become almost like an annuity for you, where you're gonna spend all your time uh, managing your database, multiplying it for more business and um, you know, bringing in more business. Now for me at my age, my, all my business now is from my database. So Outsource Kings helps me do that by pinging my database and uh, bringing in more either refi or purchase business. You see? So I use them to, to, to call my database. I don't have to do that, you see? And then all I have to do is do a Zoom meeting with the client, I think I have one at seven o'clock, and, um, and put the loan together on Zoom, put the loan into process, and the guaranteed rate team takes care of it. And I just massage it every now and then, you know, look at the pipeline and so forth. That's it. I play pickleball on Tuesdays. I play pickleball on Thursdays. I go to the gym almost every day. And I do all this during the day. It's pretty nice. I play on Friday too at two o'clock. It's pretty nice. Not a bad life. No. But why don't you talk a little bit about letting go of control and letting someone else handle your leads, handle your database? If you if you want to control everything, you'll never have a life. So you'll never be retired and, and making money in the business. It'll never happen because you can only do so much. So when I look at Facebook and I see all these posts from all these you know loan officer groups. You know, I worked 100 hours this week or 90 hours. It's almost like a badge. I mean, I almost want to work as less as possible. I mean, from the past several years, I've worked 15 hours a week, 20 hours a week, you know, and that's it. I mean, I own a home in Florida and I go down there and, I, and I'm certainly not going to sit behind the computer all day long. So what you have to do is you have to trust people. You have to be a, a good steward of your business because if there's a mistake or a problem and you're not going to close on time, it's on you. Uh, however, you need to be able to work with other people, other companies, other businesses in order to get what you need from the business, which is more business in. Your only job should be to put the loans together. And if you do it well, then that loan is not going to come back to you as a problem. So you need to find companies like, uh, like James at Outsource Kings and trust what they do because they do it very well. They're going to do it better than you. But if you don't let go and you micromanage them, then they're not going to be as effective for you, for you as they are for me. Okay? So you got to let go. You got to know where your place is. You're the leader of your team. Okay? And sure, you need to keep tabs on it, but you can't micromanage them to a point where it's just a full-time job for you. You'll never be free that way, right? 
and when do you think in your business you started thinking like this? Because I know it wasn't um, uh, as soon as you started working with us. I know it was something that had happened before sure. you started thinking like this. I mean, I always looked at my database as, as an annuity. I mean, the key to really success is living the lifestyle that you want. So it's not how many loans you close. It's how much money did you bank out of the year, right? And then turn that money into other money. So you need to learn how to generate passive income. And the mortgage industry should be just another passive income, like owning a rental property, like uh, you know doing covered calls uh, in some of the stocks that you own. So your portfolio is groups of, of uh, derivatives or, or finances that are bringing you money while you're not working. You see, it's like owning a stock. You micromanage your, or your, your uh, financial planner. No, you, you probably never even talk to them. But you know, stock goes up, you buy some Apple or Tesla, whatever, and goes up, you make money, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the mortgage business should be treated the same way. So the key is, number one, keep care of your finances, don't live over your means. And number two, save money and learn how to invest it in a way that brings you passive income as you grow older. So your database is like an annuity. It should, people in your database, they're living life that they're all younger than me. So what are they doing? They're buying their first home, then they're selling that home, then they're moving up. Well. If you're doing a good job servicing that database and keeping tabs on them, then they're going to call you when they need you, you see? So my database always calls me first. Why? Because I answer the phone. You see what I mean? So uh, if you're constantly, them, you know, with, working, with your email and texting and you know, all this automated stuff that we have today, then that database is going to continue to produce long into your years. And that's the way it should do. That database is everything for you. It's everything. Some of the, so, some of the people that we called up yeah. for you, how long do you think you've known them for? Oh God, I just closed the loan for a guy. It took about six months, very difficult deal, a uh, big, big house and so forth. I mean, you called Phil. We started that process, and uh, matter of fact, he just sent a, a message today. Here he is, and we started working with him in 2006. Wow! So think about it. that was a 1.2 million dollar loan, 280 thousand dollars cash out, and uh, you know he sent. Uh, let's see, this is what he said today, Mike. Everything funded. Thank you very much. You know and. Uh, you know, now the next time Phil, now Phil owns three rental properties and uh, we, we've, I've financed every, every house he's ever owned since 2006. Wow. You see, a client like that is like having, it's like having a rental property that pays you rent every month. And that, and that's the way it is. So you, you can just live your life, go out on the pickleball court, your, your telephone is hanging on the fence and if it rings, yeah, you stop playing, you walk over and you answer it. And you say, great. You know, and you say, listen, I'm out on the pickleball today. I'll, I'll be home at three o'clock. I'll give you a call. We'll do a Zoom tonight at seven. Let's go over everything you need. I, I and, and you know what I always tell my clients? I, I know what you need. Relax. I'll take care of it. And they hang up the phone. They go, that's done. Because they know Mike knows me. Do you, you see? I mean, no one is ever going to come within between that uh, relationship. And not an eighth of a point interest. That's for sure. You say, why? Because you make it easy. And that's what they want. And you're knowledgeable. You so so an another thing right there that I want to go a little bit deeper, the relationship you build with these people. Why don't you talk about like, like you said it was Phil. So Phil, uh, we scheduled into an appointment. Obviously we're coming in at the tail end of that kind of just rejuvenating the relationship, but you've known Phil since 2006 why don't you run me through that relationship? Um, Phil was, uh, he was a, a referral way back when and uh, buying some condos in the city. And I remember it was Orleans Street and it's, you know, you actually remember. And uh, so I finance those properties and you get them done. That's why I always take a difficult deal. 
If you can get them to do a difficult deal, the client will remember you. You'll suffer through it, but the client will remember you and more business will come. So, um, you know, I did those deals and then he grew. And as his income grew and, and his portfolio grew, my business grew along with him, you see. So now he just bought a 10,000 square foot house in Western Massachusetts. That was a very difficult loan. And, uh, but we got it done. See, so, uh, you know, we just, you just keep tabs on your database. You, you always, you know, birthdays, things like that. It's all electronic, you know, but people, uh, they respond to that stuff, you see. And then you hire like a, a company like James and that personal touch, you know, just to call them and you say, well, well, why would I call them? What would I even talk about? Just how things going, you see, and, you know, and that's it. And they will call you when they need you. And that's money in the bank. I think one of the things that happens in with a lot of us, and I think I'm, I'm glad that we're doing this. This is really interesting because um, I know this, but sometimes I'll still forget it, that your database, past clients, current clients, et cetera, those people get forgotten a lot. And a lot of people chase new business and they're always waking up. To, it's like Groundhog right. Day, you know, or the... Um, down in uh, down in Florida, we got the the hogs. The hogs are waking up as soon as they wake up. They know they're getting hunted, and it's the same thing every single day. And you know the chase. And so, um, what? Because you've been doing this for years. You're you're oh. been around the block a, a minute. You know what I mean? You've seen probably multiple economic crises happen at different times. Right. What What do you think for you was like the big like moment when you're like, all right. I got to pay attention to this database because I bet you it was before 2006. I'm very confident it was way before 2006. Like what was the, the defining moment for you? I always believe that the, the shortest path to a commission is the people that you already know and that you've already done business with. Those people are looking to transact. They're either looking for money. They're going, they want to fix up their property and they don't know the kind of uh, loans that you can bring them, like renovation loans, things like that. They don't know these things exist. And so it's, it's very worthwhile for you to book yearly meetings with these people. And especially now with Zoom, with video sharing, always do it that way uh, because they see your face, you, know, you see them, and, uh, and now you can run through their finances and you can help them even just with credit and things like that. And, and people want to have this 15, 20, half hour uh, conversation about where they're at and so forth. So just book it. And, and that will lead to people because here's what happens. When you call somebody and they're not ready to do anything, generally within the next two to three days, you'll get a phone call from somebody they know or work with. And they'll mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, so-and-so told me to call you. You see what I mean? Because now your, your top's on their mind for a few days. And when they go to work and they hear somebody, you know, looking to buy something or needs pre-approval or they need some cash out, want to renovate. And you say, I, you know, I know just the guy for you. You see? And so you'll always get referrals. So if you want new business, if you're sitting here going, geez, I'd like to buy some Apple stock or, or something like that. And I need $20,000. Well, how much does it cost me? All right, if I make $3,000 on a loan, then I need seven loans. How do I get seven loans? Well, I'd look at my database and I'd schedule 15 or 20 um, uh, bookings, Zoom meetings with those people. Well, how would you do that? I would call James up. I would, I would uh, send him a list of people and have him call and give him a script and you'll have those meetings booked. And by the end of two months, you'll have $20,000 in commission. Is it that easy? Yes, it can be. As long as you're willing to let go, hire the right people, contact them, and just do those Zoom meetings and ask them what's going on. They, they booked it, so they must have a reason. There's always a reason why somebody needs money. Remember, you're in the business of selling money. You see? So do it. It's deep. Why, why don't you talk a little bit about the list that you sent us? Those people, hmm. why don't you talk about that list? Well, what I did was, I mean, when the rates dropped, obviously there was a deep. 
So um, what I did was I went through my database and just made a list based on James criteria. So an Excel spreadsheet or, or a Google sheet. And, you know, we just use whatever technology is available to pass names back and forth. And so we did that. And then he went ahead and contacted these people and booked through Calendry was what we use. So I use Calendry. It's like 15 bucks a month. And, and then I booked through there. So the way I crafted the list was I looked at all these people who uh, in, in the database, I did just data mining. I looked at the product that they own. So suppose you've closed a bunch of people that are in arms right now, and they're going to expire in the next year or two. They're going to refinance before that loan expires. That's a need. If you've got people in a 30-year fixed, maybe they want to pay their mortgage off. Maybe they can afford a 20-year, not a 15, because that payment may be too high, but maybe they'd want it. But talk to everyone that's in a 30 about moving to a 15 or a 20, okay? And then I built a template, uh, just a spreadsheet that compares their current mortgage with a 30, a new 30, 20, and 15. And just show them the numbers. And I always say this, the math will show them what to do. And they'll say, yeah, I'll take that one. And they weren't even thinking of refinancing. You see, maybe you'll increase their mortgage payment and yet they'll refinance. Think about it. Mm. Okay. You see, some people are in a 15 and wish they were back to a 30. I mean, think about this. Say I'm in a 15 year mortgage and my payment is 2,800 bucks a month and you could bring them down to 1,800. What could they do with an, with an extra 1,200 a month? They could invest it. They could do whatever they want with it. Maybe they've got a lot of debt to pay off. You see what I mean? So there's always movement because life changes. So if you haven't talked to a client, many people in the last two years, let's say, life may have changed for those people. They may have taken on some debt. They may have taken, maybe their family expanded. And maybe they, they're thinking about a new house. But here's the big mistake that we make. Now, I'm not going to call this person because, I, you know, I've already talked to them and I know what they need. People don't know how to do the math. And they're sitting in a house that they wish they could sell and move up, but they don't know how to do it. So show them how. Show them. Just find out where they're at and come up with a solution and ask them where would they want to be. See? I mean, if you look at me right now, I mean, I got two homes and, and, and so forth, but I've been looking at a lot of videos about St. Petersburg. So if somebody called me about St. Petersburg, I'm interested because my house is in the villages and I wouldn't mind June, July, August living on the beach in St. Petersburg and Airbnb that property out and leave it empty for a couple of months and then move, live back and forth in the same state. I'm thinking of doing that. Now, can you imagine if a realtor had the foresight to say, I'm going to call this guy. He's 64 years old, probably sitting on a lot of money. Uh, maybe he'd like, a, he's already come down to Florida. Maybe he'd like a property on the beach. If I was a realtor, I'd be calling everybody who lives inland to see if they'd, and show them numbers on how they could actually own something on the beach. You see what I mean? I'm sitting here going, I, I would like to do that. Yep. And, and obviously, you know, we're both uh, down in Florida and, you know, I know people compete and I think to myself, how many people are in their database that they have reached out to? So these are people they've already cl closed the transaction. It's a complete deal that it's two years, five years later. These people have graduated college. Maybe they got you no know, master's degree or moved up in life. Now they've got extra income. And now they can afford a larger size home. Right. And they're just waiting for that phone call. It's just like, right. hey, I, I know right. servicing. I, I put a little message in our Zoom chat, servicing our client and seeing where they're at now and if their needs changed. Right. Every person in your database, you should talk to them at least once a year. 
on a Zoom call, face to face over the computer, at least once a year. You should be doing that. Okay. And of course, pre COVID, we would always have like an event somewhere, some kind of barbecue or something, and get them out. But you should now be at least having that one year conversation. You see? So you send that list to James, James calls them, you guys work on the script, and then he books them through your calendar or whatever you know, you know, media you use. And now you hold those Zoom meetings. I mostly do these Zoom meetings at like seven o'clock at night, you see? And that way there, you know, got something to do at night. And normally it's kind of downtime. And, uh, and, and that's how I fill it. Uh, you see, and, uh, and, and those are all loans. And believe me, when you hang up the phone, you're going to have a task to help these people get to the next level of their life. You see, and, uh, and, and believe me, you will get a referral, even if there's nothing there, they're happy with their house, they're happy where they are, they're not going to move. You've done a great job for them. And it's just a friendly conversation. That's never a waste of time because your phone is going to ring. <laughs> they're, going to, they're going to go to work, you know, the next day or whatever, and they're going to refer you to somebody. I, I'm telling you, you book, you book 10 Zoom meetings this week, you will have new loans coming in. And you've done practically nothing to initiate that. It's a beautiful thing. What's, what's funny about this, and, I, and I, I, I wish all my Facebook friends, especially my mortgage friends, loan officers, real estate agents would watch this because they'll get some of the terminology. But what's funny about this is this transfers over to any industry. This does yeah, not of matter. Course. You oh, yeah. Plumber, I mean, yeah. You could be, be a plumber that watches this and say, I helped, you know, 50 people every year and it's 10 years later. So I got this database of all these people. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know what? We're actually looking at a new house. It's twice the size. It's, you know, the job size is bigger. It's double the price practically now for the, the plumber. And all they had to do was touch base. And, you know, even myself, right. just to be transparent, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking small. And then I hear something like this. And it's like, he, you use the Little ER service to, um, in a way, churn up new business from all your past people. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, raise the crops again, call it what it is, you know, sprinkle some water back on them. Some of the seedlings don't grow. Some of the things yep. crop back up and it, it, it turns into um, gold. So, because uh, people are going to watch this, and they're going to wonder, you know, okay, so, you know, you did all that, but what, what did you take home? So why don't you talk about commission? Cause that's what everyone understands money at the end of the day. Uh, you messaged me commission, but I want it to come from you. And so what, how did you do with the, with our service and the commission from that? Well, we did. I mean, we did a lot of business and uh, I think we grossed, you know, from what you gave me, what I gave you and you booked in return, uh, grossed out to 160,000 in, in, in my paycheck. You know, I mean, that's, that's net money. That money goes right to my brokerage account. And then I just take that money and, uh, and I just work it into um, generating more passive income. See, that's, that's the key to it. So that's quite a bit. And then this year was even more, you know, it was over 200. Wow. So, I mean, that's, that's really good business for somebody who never calls realtors. I mean, I haven't called realtors in years. So, because I'm, I, you know, I don't, I don't need all that business anymore. I don't, I don't want to sit behind this desk for eight hours, 10 hours a day. And those days are behind me. I don't have to do that anymore. I save the money. My money is working for me and I don't need to do that. So, if you're looking for passive income and you're sitting on a large database, you've been in this business a while, then you really need to have a service like James calling your database and booking those appointments. Absolutely. You're losing out on a lot because if they don't hear from you, they're going to call somebody else. Hmm. And, and, and once you lose them, you lose them for life. And, and, and that's a fact. I'll do anything to keep a client with me just to stay with me so no one comes into that relationship. That's really important. So if they never hear from you, they probably think you're gone, out of the business. 
I mean, how many calls do you get where the person goes, oh, I, had a, I had a mortgage guy, but he uh, um, or whatever industry you're in. And uh, but I think I think he retired. You know, he's not doing it anymore. Mm. I mean, did you ever get that? I get a lot. And I say, wow, that's a person who doesn't maintain their past clients, no matter what the industry is. I say that that that's bad. I say they should be calling you first. Say, and the only way you're going to do that is you've got to stay top of mind in in whatever product or service that you offer in their life. It's 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 very interesting. Uh, a lot of times, what some people will do when they hire us for an old database service, kind of like what, what you did, um, they'll use an old database of Facebook leads. Hmm. Which are not even clients and you used an old database of actual clients, which right. it, it's open in my eyes. And obviously specifics of mortgage stuff, you are the genius in that. I am just, hmm. you, know, you know, hearing this from you in terms of the arm 30 to arm 15. Where did you come up with that idea? Because this is such a unique way of using this service to transition someone. Did you, Look at the look at the market. I know that we had the lowest rates ever, and is that when right. that really inspired the thought? Yeah, I mean, there was no way I was going to be able to call all these people on my own. So if you look at the task and you sit down, it becomes overwhelming, and you say, "How can I stay top of mind for all these people and do all the day to day things that I need to do?" Also, you can't if you try and and keep all this to yourself and to stay in control of all of it, you will not be in control of any of it because you will not have enough time to do everything right. So you have to say, okay, if I can remove the initial call and booking and, and not ever even have to think about it. And while you're sitting here doing your, whatever you set up, for me, it's mortgages. So for me to set up their mortgage, and then all of a sudden an email comes in, oh, calendar, 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 the, those are bookings, bookings, bookings from Outsource Kings. So that's a process that I never even got involved with. And yet now I'm booked on Tuesday night, seven o'clock, Tuesday night, seven thirty, Tuesday night at eight o'clock, Wednesday night at eight o'clock, seven o'clock or whatever times that, you know, you want in your business. You see what I mean? That's money. And that's how we make the kind of numbers that I'm telling you about, you see. And so it, these are the easiest. It's the easiest, quickest path to uh, to a sale. People who know. you. No question. Wow. It. it... And so I, what I want to get across also, what I think that can kind of be a confusion, if a new loan officer watches this right now, this mm. may not necessarily apply to them, right? Yep, absolutely. Just being, frank, just being real, this may not apply to you if you're a new loan officer. At what point do you think a loan officer has enough people in their database? I mean, obviously there's variety, but how big, how do, how big do you think their database should be before they start doing something like this? I mean, I mean, the average... Mortgage broker that makes, let's say, that, that does, you know, $10 million in business is closing 50 loans in a year. Okay. So that's 50 people, husband and wife, two people that probably go to work every day that can refer. So that's in your first year, you've probably closed 50 people. For realtors, it's less because they make more per transaction. But for mortgage brokers, if you're if you've done 10 million to 15 million dollars in volume, which isn't a, which isn't a lot in the mortgage business, but most people sit at that level, right? President's Club is 30 million, you see. So they've probably done anywhere from 35 to 55 loans in a year. Okay. And they're most likely stuck in that place doing 35 to 55 loans per year, every year, okay? And they can't make the jump from 15 million to 30 million, and then from 30 up from there, okay? So if you've got 25 to 50 people in your database, you should have 
25 to 50 Zoom meetings booked every year, minimum. Mm. See? Now, if you're just starting off, you need referral partners. So what you've got to do is you've got to look bigger than you are, okay? And so that's why it's better to have someone like Outsource Kings making these calls for you than you. Because what do I know if you call me? I know you have a lot of time Mm -hmm. because you're making the calls. But for people who have a big business, they're not making the initial call, are they? Somebody's doing it for them and building them up. You see what I mean? So you could send a database of realtors in your marketplace. Uh, uh, I'm in the mortgage business, so I'll use my business. Divorce attorneys in your marketplace. Uh, Insurance people. Financial planners. And you could build a database of these people from LinkedIn or Facebook or anything like that. They call it a target audience in Facebook. And then you could construct that database and give it to James, you see? And then you guys work on a script and they make the calls, you see? And then now you have realtors or attorneys or financial planners booking these Zoom meetings. Now those will probably be during, during the day, see? And, uh, and then you just, you work on a presentation to show your wares for that particular you know, product, service, or, uh, or a target audience. You see what I mean? So you land a few, and now you're getting referrals from them. Now your database is beginning to build. That's, that's how I would build it if I was brand new. There's, Say, a, there's a book out, and I wonder if you've heard it. I just looked it up on my phone on Audible. Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty by Harvey McKay. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. I mean, the problem that we always have starting off is, well, this is going to cost me money. I may spend more money than I got to make. That is true. You may. But you know what? That's how business is. And it'll motivate you to close loans quicker, faster, better, so you get paid so that you can keep up with the expense of hiring these third parties. But what you're going to reap from it, you know, in just a few months is be, would, would be exponentially more than you could ever do on your own. You see, you can't do this on your own and your volume proves it. If you've done 10 to 15 million and this year and you did 10 to 15 million last year, then there's a problem. Do you see what I mean? And there's a problem. And if you have no time on the weekends, if your biggest complaint is I don't have time and so forth, then there's a problem on how you're running your business. You see, you're doing too much, taking too much control, and it's costing you double your income. Do you see that? You've got to grow. You've got to grow. What's that? One of the biggest things that we see Uh, with some of the people um, is they'll get in their own way or they think about, hey, this is costing me money and I don't see a result from it right off the bat. And I'll ask them, what is your average loan price? And then what's your average time frame and how many loans do you do a month? Hmm. And the answer is usually anywhere from 30 plus days on the low end. Usually it's around three months on the um, average. Yep. And then I'll ask them, how, how do you expect in the first 30 days that, you know, we were supposed to overnight change things? Mm. What would you say to someone like that with that kind of thinking or thought or that you know, process? Activity is always going to produce results. Okay. Activity is always going to produce results. You've got to be talking to people. You're in the sales business. You have to be talking to people. If no one knows you, then no one's going to transact with you. So our business requires time. There's no question about it. We don't sell a product instantly and reap the benefits. Okay. We're always paid in the rears. Okay. So 
what you can, what you have to do is you always have to be active. You've always have to be calling. You've always have to be touching people. That's where you should be spending 80 to 90% of your time. The rest of the time is, is being spent by other people doing the phone calling, the booking, the processing of the loans, the getting the documents, those kind of things. Okay. But you need to be, need, need to be active in the business of finding business. That's what you need to be doing. Okay. And it's going to take time, but you will get to a point where the closings are happening now all the time. And you're constantly getting a, 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 a bi-weekly or a monthly paycheck, however your company pays you, or if you're self-employed, then there's always closings. But you've got to get it to that point. If you're closing two to four loans a month, then the first the, then the first 90 days could be painful. Okay. But believe me, you will have more than enough money coming in to pay everything you've spent to get the wheel spinning. Okay. You just got to have faith in it. So, okay. If you're doing the right things, you'll grow. If you're not, then the numbers always show it. Numbers don't lie. Okay. Love that. And so, so kind of just to abbreviate what you're saying. So you're saying with a loan officer that's thinking short term, like this isn't working out first 30, 60 days, 90, it's a mindset issue. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, you, you've got to get over it. You, you, you have to get over that because you have to get your business to a, to a point, you know, it's like the roller coaster where you're going up, 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 and then, and then down it goes and it's all momentum. You will get to that point. You will get to a point where you're working on stuff, you know, new deals and the phone starts ringing and it doesn't stop ringing. And then you get to a point where you're like, how am I going to handle all this? Okay. It's a really good problem to have. You will get to that point. You'll have days where the phone will not stop ringing, where people just want you. Hey, I, I heard you did this for so-and-so. Uh, the realtor told me to call you. You can, you can get these kind of loans done. You can do this. And, and you're, you're going you're gonna to get those calls all the time. And they're going to become more and more frequent but you've got to get it to that point. So if you hold yourself back, never invest and hire the right people, then you'll never get to that point. Mm. You see, now when you get to a point where, where you can't handle it, that's when you hire more people or you talk to your company and they build you, they send more people to your team. You, you see what I mean? This is why it, if, you, if you talk to people who do $100 million producers, they will always tell you the toughest road was getting to like 10 million to 40 million. And then when they got the 40 million, getting to 100 million was easy. And you say, how can that be? Because they've already, they have the machine rolling. They have the pieces in place. They have the money to handle it all. And they know how to handle the volume. And, they, and the team is in place and the loans, are, are, the processing is simple. See, that, that's how I can do, you know, 50, 5.7 million in, in the pipeline. It's like I have no loans in the pipeline. It's, it's like there's nothing there. There's, I don't have any problems. There's no issues. And the team just takes care of it all. See, it's a really good, it's a, it's a really nice feeling when you have it that way. You got to get it to that way. And, and sometimes it's hard to see. A couple of things I want to touch on that, um, you know, I, I, I already know a lot of people are going to watch this and I'm excited for a lot of people to watch this. Mm. And what I don't want to paint is I don't want to paint a picture like this was all easy for you from day one. And all of a sudden you magically got here. How many years have you been in the industry? I started this industry. I was a software engineer for 20 years. Um, I left that industry in 1999 and took a couple of years off, found the mortgage industry in 2003 is when I took the test. And, uh, and that's when I started. I did a lot of net branching and so forth. And then I found guaranteed rate in 2009. So I went through that, the period of 2007, eight, nine, I was tough. That was really tough. 
not only did you did you uh, ha- have to find loans, but you had to find companies who would who would be in business for the amount of time it took to close the loan. I'm not kidding you. You know, it, it it was it was not easy, and I had a full office and copy machine bills and and uh, you know lease five thousand dollar a month lease every month to meet. You know it, that was not easy. But uh, I went with Guaranteed Rate. They're a company that has a process where they don't want you involved in the paperwork, the documents, or any of that stuff. They have departments for everything. Sure, they take take a good chunk of your of your pay. You know, you'll make more as a broker, but then you have to find all the pieces. And if if that's what you want, go for it. You know, if you want a company to do it all for you, then hire on to a company like like a guaranteed rate, a Loan Depot or something like that. You see. So uh, but your database is your database. That's your gold. That's your retirement. It's like your pension. Look at it as a pension. Okay, we've worked, somebody's worked 30 years. Now that pension is going to pay them for the rest of their life. That's what's happening to me. At 64, I can't collect Social Security and I don't want to take it until until, until I have the maximum. So my pension is my database, Mm. see? And I'm in complete control of my schedule, my time. I can do whatever I want every day. And I never have to think, oh, gee, I got, I got, I got that, I got that. You see, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Pipeline meeting at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning. And, and then, uh, you know, they know what they have to do. So do, you think, do you think some people, I say some people, I should say loan officers, mortgage brokers are too focused on new leads such as Facebook leads versus their past clients? Totally. I, I mean, mortgage brokers are a little bit better at this than realtors because we have, um, we have refis. Realtors, they hardly ever look at their past because once they sold them a house, they're going to be in it for four or five years. See what I mean? So they're constantly hunting the next listing, say, or the next buyer. Mortgage brokers, we have refinances and people always need money. So it's up to you to really stay on top of that database so if you're in a, in a business where the product that they're buying can be refreshed, you see what I mean? You know what I mean? You see what I mean? Then you really, really, it's imperative that you have someone like Outsource Kings on your side because you can't keep track. You, you, I mean, unless you're going to call all these people every day and the new stuff, that's going to be a full day for you. See what I mean? Say that, and and you're not going to get it right because you're going to get a lot of hangups and nobody's there. And so you're not equipped to handle it the way they are. They do this for a living, much better at it than I am. So I'd much rather give it up. You see, and no one likes making those calls anyway. You, you see, so so if you yeah, so if you're hunting new business. That's fantastic. That's great. You're calling new realtors and, and financial planners or whomever you need to call within your industry. But that database, never turn your back on it because that's what you're working for. I mean, in essence, if you've done this right, at the end of your career, you should be able to hire on. I should be able to hire on somebody in their 20s. Think about it. I could advertise somebody in their 20s to say, come on in. And you can start with thousands of people in a database. Okay. And here's the company that calls them. And you just send me a check every time you close a loan until a certain period of time, then it's all yours. How many people wouldn't mind taking that deal from me? Think about it. That's what your database is worth. You could sell it. What's it worth? It's generating 200 grand a year. What's that worth? What's a business worth that could generate almost a quarter of a million dollars passive every year? What would you pay for it? You'd pay millions for a business like that. If you bought an apartment building that had those kind of numbers, it would be on the market for 10 million. Right? (laughs) Think about it. it, it, It's it's incredible. It's incredible. 
it's incredible what and how you used our service and applied what we do for you and mm. the perception is the reality as you both as you both mentioned that you know we're calling on behalf of michael chivarini's office and you know we're scheduling these for appointments for you so they people you're not talking to them direct and what's incredible is your memory of all these people i think that's mm. something that I know it's not just you. I make the joke with every um, mortgage broker, loan officer as a client. I said, you guys have the best memory ever. And they all laugh, which tells me it's true. Yeah, we remember. Which tells me that, guess what? A certain portion of their database is also going to remember them. And it's just that little touch, you know? Yeah. One call, two call that they pick up and, and, and it's just that connection. And what I originally had planned, and this is really awesome, this this call is really taking this direction, but I originally planned when I created this old database service uh, versus, we have new lead service, you know, active leads coming in, and the old database, I thought of it as, oh, you've got an old list of Facebook leads you've never talked to. You thought of it as, hey, you know what, let James call all the people I've ever worked with, which is just, right. I mean, that I'm talking about that from now on, because any business has that. And, and those forgotten soldiers, those forgotten clients. And it, it's incredible. So thank you. I want to thank you for, mm. for using our service for that um, in, a, in a, another fashion because the technique and technical parts of it, you know, sure, it might be ARM 30, ARM 15, refi rate, you know, helping people save, you know, based off an old rate, things like that. And, um, you know, that's just industry specific. Right. You know, it, yep. It, it's incredible, man. I, I, you know, we appreciate working with you hmm. uh, foremost. Um, I know my team does. We, you know, you got to speak to my team when we have a team meeting that just hmm. ended overlapped. And um, so I want to kind of close out on a few things. One a little fun question. Um, I know you're a Patriots fan. Hmm. Did you follow Brady down to Florida? Are you, are you? A <laughs> fan of Brady Tampa? Oh, actually, actually I grew up as a Packer fan. So okay. I knew, I knew when he went to Tampa that the Packers were going to end up meeting the Bucks in, in a chance in a, in, a, in, a, in a playoff game, and that was painful. And, and you know, I belonged to this Packer group on Facebook, and I, and I told the guys, I wrote a a, a post, and I, I said, "You're playing the Brady luck. Brady's career will never be duplicated." Because the Packers, all, all the fans complain about the front office and how we've had Favre and Rodgers and only won two, two championships. And this guy's won, what, seven? And, and, and he'll win it this year, too. I, I don't see them not. They're returning 22. All 22 of their starters are returning. Brady's cap hit is $9 million. Rodgers is 37 <laughs> So he will never be duplicated again. I mean, Mahomes will probably win one Super Bowl in his career um, because they they can't pay all those players now. They're, they're going to drop off after this year. Wilson's got one. Um, Breeze has won. You can't compare with him. And so when he came to the NFC, I knew it. I was like the Brady luck. You can't, you just can't, you just can't beat this guy. Yep. I don't know what it is, but I call it the Brady luck. And Terrible. another Another, uh, I guess you could say fun or kind of, you know, a little bit more um, serious. What would you say to anyone out there that's thinking about uh, working with us or thinking about has a database and where to start? What would you say to them? I would say, try it. Uh, just try it. Just call James up. He'll describe to him the database you have. Let's say it's past clients. He will take it from there. He knows exactly what to do and how to generate the success that I had in your in your life. So just listen to him, follow his steps and just do it. OK, and that's it. Allocate funds that are coming in your closings for it. And you're going to write this off your taxes anyway. OK, so you're going to get a lot of it back at the end of the year and just deal with the expense because it's going to pay in spades. OK, so my advice to you is you have to do this because it's costing you money every month in performance, in bonus money. If your company has that uh, meeting milestones of President's Club and things like that and beyond, you need this on your team. You, can, you cannot 
be a 50 million, 80 million, 100 million dollar player all along. You can't. You will stay where you are and you will work harder than the guys in your company making 100 million. I guarantee that. And so it's a little thing like this that's holding you back. Try it. Awesome. Appreciate your time as always. Well, this is great. Um, I'll, I'll get you there after the call for a minute. Um, I'm just going to stop the recording. But thank you again for, uh, for joining me. You're welcome. It's a pleasure, James.